We have had clear messages this past century from heaven. God has sent his Blessed Mother with his divine plan to save humanity and the world from the grip of the devil, who as we know was granted the 20th century to test the church and the world. His time is running short and he knows it. From Fatima and Garabandal to Akita and now Medjugorje, Our Lady has given clear messages and predictions of what is coming to us, many of which have already come true. There is another famous apparition site which has great significance in this battle of the century. This place is Amsterdam, where Our Blessed Mother introduced herself as the Lady of All Peoples. Later, with church clarity in the investigations which have concluded these events as of supernatural origin, we have accepted the title of Our Lady of All Nations. Over the span of 14 years, beginning on the feast day of the Annunciation, on March 25th, 1945, Our Lady appeared to Ida Piedman, giving her many messages and showing her many visions of future events. These were contained within 56 apparitions that would continue until 1959. As identifying herself as the Lady of All Peoples, Our Lady also explained some of her titles over six messages in regards to the image we now identify as Our Lady of All Nations. Within this image, she explained it by detailing the symbolisms which identifies her as Advocate, Mediatrix of All Graces and Co-Redemptrix with Christ. Let us briefly look at the image now in detail before moving on to the messages contained in these apparitions and see where they fit for our times. Our hands have radiant wounds, thereby Mary describes them as the suffering of body and soul which she bore in union with her divine Son for the redemption of mankind. She is the Mediatrix of all grace. It's as if there had been a wound in the middle of her hands. From them, three rays of light are coming forth, shining upon the sheep. These rays represent grace, redemption and peace. Grace from the Father, redemption from the Son and peace from the Holy Spirit. She explains that her loincloth is the loincloth of her Son, for she stands as a lady before the cross. She then explained the meaning of standing upon the globe. I have firmly placed my feet upon the globe, for in this time the Father and the Son want to bring me into this world as co-redemptrix, mediatrix and advocate. In a biblical representation, Mary shows many sheep around the globe which symbolise all the nations and races of the earth. Then she says that they will not find true rest until they lie down in tranquillity, look upon the cross as the centre of this world. Co-Redemptrix is very unique in these apparitions, a title that is not given to her by the Church, but is very much a topic of debate. With four Marian dogmas already infallibly declared, can all this work she has carried out this past century be the clear proof we need to bring this fifth dogma of co-redemptrix into play. We will now look at some main messages concerning our time as given by our Holy Mother in Amsterdam. We will then explore where these apparitions fit with Heaven's plan. The messages include several social and political predictions, specifically in our own time. These messages reveal a staggering fulfilment and are becoming more and more identifiable. With so many apparitions spanning the course of 14 years, we can categorise some of them as follows and see where they are connected. A new split in the world, China, Russia and the United States specifically, the chaos in the Middle East, and the Pope and the Church. We only have to turn on the news right now, or even hearing those places or people Straight away we trigger what's happening right now, and has been for quite some time, only going on to becoming worse before it gets better. Her messages also reveal a period of increasing moral degeneration, 
disasters and war, which end in total catastrophe unless humanity converts. Let's compile a few of these messages together and read them. Then in a few moments we will then relate to them in our own times. So now that we've looked at some of the main messages that highlight the topics that Our Lady wished to express as Our Lady of All Nations, let's go back to the main highlight points here and start to break down what the messages contain. She spoke of moral degeneration, disasters, war, which ultimately in the end leads to a total catastrophe. Moral degeneration is evident for everyone to see. You look at the modest dress of people back in the 1940s or upon the time of these apparitions, or even further back in time, then look at what people can buy these days in the shops. Everything to enhance the bodily image, which no doubt provokes lust, the counterfeit of love. This lustful era has been inflamed by widespread global pornography and contraception, turning the pleasure of sex into a selfish desire rather than a giving of oneself in love to the spouse. Contraception being added to this mixture has led to further divorces, multiple marriages, abortions and sexual abuse in all walks of life, exactly as the papal encyclical Humanae Vitae forewarned about. Even in the Catholic Church, sexual abuse is on a warfare of its own and the Church itself is being purified of this. But this is not a Church problem, it's a human problem. Moral decline has impacted all of society where we are regressing back to paganistic ways as we put ourselves and our bodily desires first and we choose to forget God. All that is happening in the world is a result of selfishness and turning away from God. By turning away from God and doing all we desire, it leads us to false worship in other ways and ultimately to despair. With all that has been going on since the so-called war on terror that began 17 years ago or so, America and its allies have been in constant state of war. Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Yemen, and now the main focus is in Syria. However, out with the direct action, we also see other countries such as Egypt, Turkey, Venezuela, Argentina, following into economic despair and social division. Europe and the West have managed to steer out of the worst recession ever recorded these past few years. 
but the fresh trade war between America and China, America and Russia, and the sanctions also enforced on them with the Western allies, pushes all these nations further into an all-out third world war eventually. Our Lady warned of this 60 years ago. Syria is the stage where Russia stood up against America and the West and has had a standoff with them these past several years. President Trump seems to be bringing some peaceful news in regards to the relationship with North Korea, but is it pretense? Is it another place for a strengthening of their military in order to take on the superpowers of Russia and China? Then we think of the Middle East. We only need to watch the daily news channels and check online to see how obvious all this now is. In fact, we are so used to it, we have become desensitised and keep it with our TV viewing. But this should also be alarming at how rapid so many things are happening at once. The Middle East remains the central area of the focus of the world. As if what we have highlighted already wasn't enough, recently President Trump has now moved the American Embassy to Jerusalem. This has provoked daily battles between Israel and Palestinians, which are now increasing yet again, and many videos are emerging showing the cruelty of Israeli soldiers and what they are carrying out on Palestinian civilians. Recently, there's now even further friction that Israel may be looking as a preemptive attack against Iran, its sworn enemy. With America dug into so many nations around the Middle East and playing off all other nations, what's left or how long is left until Iran is the next on the list? But just like Syria, Iran has very good and deep ties with China and Russia. It's a game of chess in the end. How many moves ahead before eventually it's checkmate? Now America, this past month or so, has announced that they plan to create an elite space force in order to dominate warfare and the planet. Where are we heading and how much time is left before all hell breaks loose? We know that things are happening and people see the obvious path that lies ahead if things do not change for the better. But why are they happening? Why is it bad things dominating our planet? Why do so many bad things happen in order for so-called peace? Is there another reason? If God exists and sends us these messages through our Blessed Mother, then what is the root cause of these things that will ultimately bring to the destruction of the planet? As already pointed out, the world, especially the West, has forgotten God and created in his own image and likeness rather than the image and likeness of God. This is the humanity's own doing and soon we'll be humbled enough to realise where we went wrong. There is a spiritual battle in the depth of all of this. As in Fatima and Akita, and now here in Amsterdam, Our Lady talks about the danger of world catastrophe, but always as being conditional. She has been sent precisely in order to avoid or mitigate it. The purpose of the prophecy is not to announce an inevitable fate, but to give a remedy to prevent it. This remedy is conversion, repentance and prayer. This brings us to the essence of these messages, which is to testify to the spiritual battle going on in our times. The social and political predictions are just a prelude, as Our Lady points out, especially in the spiritual fight that exists, veiled behind all these external events. All the bad going on is what Satan is trying to bring. He has very little time left, and his whole plan of the century Everything, all the toys are coming out the playpen now. Many times again and again, Our Lady points to moral and spiritual degeneration as the core crisis in the church and in the world, and that the forces that are behind this, religion will have the hard struggle. The world wants to take away the religion, and I dare say from the globalisation point of view of a new world order, man himself 
will set up his very own, which has been prophesied elsewhere. When we see what's going on regarding global conflicts and trade wars, we see societies, especially in the West, that are truly morally bankrupt. Societies that have become so lost, especially since the mid-20th century. The traditional image of the family has been completely changed by those in hierarchical power, and with the church maintaining its tradition and teachings, it is therefore an obstacle to the new world order. We can't say there are weapons of mass destruction hiding in St Peter's Basilica under the Vatican, that card's already been played with Iraq. But what better way to bring down the church, the moral guidance for humanity, and to show the evil within it? The evil of these sex abusers, of those who were entrusted as our guiding lights to heaven. The church, since the Boston scandal in 2002, has been made more accountable for its crimes, and rightly so. But this past month, with the Holy Father attending the World Meeting of Families in Dublin, much of the news coverage was dominated by those wishing to speak of the crimes more than that of what was happening of this week-long celebration. Pope Paul VI stated in the 1960s that the smoke of Satan had entered the church. Now we see how much so with what is coming to light. Since Fatima, through Akita, Garabandal, here in Amsterdam, and presently in Medjugorje, Our Lady has been working on this plan of the century to not only have humanity saved, but also to save the church. The timing, the content, and fulfilment of so many things, we should be taking heed more than ever and convert, pray, and repent as she asks. If not, then what has been forewarned will ultimately happen. We have been given the remedy.